Hey everyone, this is a brief little reading uh, of a little essay or article by Maximilien Rubel, uh, written in 1982 for the Socialist Party of Great Britain's journal Socialist Standard, but not published. And it was transcribed for Marxist.org by Adam Buick of the Socialist Party of Great Britain. Um, I actually have some of Adam Buick's writings on this YouTube channel, and I would say that the little book that people, someone made out of his uh, writings, him and uh, I think it's John Crump is the other person's name, about the fundamentals of what capitalism is and what socialism entails, um, is really, really phenomenal. I would really recommend everyone listen to that or find access to the, the readings because uh, it's great. Also, I highly recommend the book that Maximilien Rubel co-authored with uh, John Crump uh, called, uh, I believe it's just called Non-Market Socialism. Um, also, a tremendous series of entries about various uh, dissident Marxist movements and Marxist adjacent, including anarchist communism. And uh, I think it's the only one that doesn't call itself Marxist that they describe in the non market socialism book, but it's fantastic. Anyway, don't know why I'm rambling on about all that. So here it is The Ethical Work of Karl Marx by Maximilien Rubel, 1982. One. If ethics is taken to be, on the one hand, the negation of bourgeois ideology and morality, and on the other as the intellectual and practical anticipation of the humanist values which are to govern relations among individuals in a world community freed from today's dominant alienating institutions, economic, political, ideological, etc., then the work of Karl Marx may consequently be understood as an ethical act. As such, this work is one of the most important contributions to a radical transformation of mankind's destiny, to humanity's passage from the pre-human to the human stage, from human prehistory to history made by man. 2. As an ethical act, Marx's work is based on scientific proof of the opportunity afforded to mankind to choose between collective suicide made possible by technical achievements which escape man's rational control and human self-realization thanks to the reasonable use of the world's resources and the technical advances of modern science. 3. As an ethical act, Marx's teaching and practice was inspired by his view of the rapid cyclical development and expansion of the capitalist mode of production on a world scale, and thus of an increasing proletarianization of the laboring masses, despite the immense progress in science and techniques, and finally of mankind's opportunity for material and intellectual emancipation. It is through a growing consciousness of this opportunity of, that the proletariat of the industrially developed countries was to constitute itself into political parties and, quote, win the battle of democracy, end quote, either legally by universal suffrage or by a revolutionary struggle, i.e. a general strike and the workers' takeover of the means of production and view of self-management. Four, as an ethical act, Marx's theory was offered to the most numerous and poorest class not as a definite revelation of proletarian slavery and human emancipation, but as an instrument for revolutionary self-education in the tradition of the teaching and practice of those great social reformers whose disciple Marx acknowledged to be. Marx, an insatiable reader and scholar himself, provided a definition of his intellectual and literary vocation while admitting the limits of his theoretical originality in this following confession to his daughter, Laura, quote, You'll certainly fancy, my dear child, that I am very fond of books because I trouble you with them at so unseasonable a time, but you would be quite mistaken. I am a machine contemned to devour books and then throw books in a changed form on the dunghill of history, end quote. Laura had just married Paul Lafargue, and the two were spending their honeymoon in Paris, letter dated 11th April 1868, shortly after the publication of the first volume of Capital. 
5. Marx, who was a disciple of Epicurus, Spinoza, and Leibniz, as well as the French and English materialists, succeeded in constructing a worldview which he in no way considered as a new system of thought, nor as a new philosophy or a new science. He never asked that workers study Hegel's logic before attacking capital, the book Capital. Although his masterwork remained unfinished, it is perfectly understandable as a set of scientific and critical theses who aim, whose aim is to disclose the, quote, economic law of motion of modern society, end quote, preface to capital, and as a series of ethical norms and postulates derived from empirical observations of the self-emancipatory efforts and struggles of the modern slaves, the victims not of capitalists, but of capital. The object of scientific analysis is the, quote, reign of necessity, end quote. The object of ethical vision is the, quote, reign of liberty, end quote. Capital Book 3, Chapter 48 of the edition established by Engels. 6. In adhering not to any socialist or communist ideology, but to the cause of working class and of human emancipation, Marx immediately formulated his ethical creed by affirming a, quote, categorical imperative, end quote, that was fundamentally different from the one proposed by Kant. Quote, the criticism of religion ends with the teaching that man is the highest being for man. Hence, the categorical imperative to overthrow all relations in which man is a debased, enslaved, forsaken, despicable being, end quote. Deutsch Franz Zischer Jahrbücher, 1844. After he had become a member of the Communist League and was entrusted with drawing up its charter and articles of association, Marx thought best to express the meaning of this imperative in the form of an appeal for union, similar to that which before him the leaders of the Chartist movement had addressed to the British workers. Marx added to it a worldwide dimension, quote, workers of all land, I think it's supposed to be all lands, but it says all of all hands, so I'll just read it as it's written. <laughs> uh, quote, workers of all land unite, exclamation point, end quote. <laughs> this appeal of 1848 was, nearly 20 years later, to constitute the implicit conclusion to capital as formulated in the three pages of the chapter entitled The Historical Tendency of Capitalist Accumulation. This chapter ends with two passages taken from the Communist Manifesto, in which Marx draws a parallel between, on the one hand, the growth of poverty, oppression, slavery, and degradation, and on the other, the revolt of the ever-growing working class, educated, united, and organized by the very mechanism of the capitalist process of production. Here we find a typical example of the double-sided reasoning, the empirical judgment of the lucid observer paired with the ethical conception of the revolutionary behavior and emancipatory will of slaves who consciously realize their enslavement. Seven. Marx refused to, quote, prescribe recipes in the style of Auguste Comte, question mark, for the cookshops of the future, end quote. Afterward, to the second edition of Capital, 1873, just as he never claimed to have invented any new morality intended for the slaves of Capital. While we may justly affirm, in Engel's words, that Marx's, quote, real mission in life was to contribute in one way or another to the overthrow of capitalist society, and of the state institutions which brought it which which it brought into being which the capitalist society brought into being to contribute to the liberation of the modern proletariat end quote it is wrong to claim that quote he was the first to make bracket this proletariat end bracket conscious of its own position and its needs conscious of the conditions of its emancipation end quote through his dubious eulogy delivered at Marx's graveside, Engels became the first bearer of Marxist ideology, and thus of a new political superstition whose principal representatives were to be Lenin and Kautsky.
The British proletariat was the first to have gained consciousness of its enslavement and of the conditions for its emancipation. Marx had chosen to cooperate in the movement for emancipation of the modern proletariat, not as a teacher, but as a disciple of the British proletariat, putting at its service not only the fruits of his studies, but also his energy as a militant, as an ethical act. This choice reduced Marx's life to that of intellectual an intellectual pariah, with a career on the margins of official society to that of a perpetual beggar, who depended above all on the hands out, handouts from his friend Engels. It was not as a teacher and founder, but as a disciple and pariah that in 1856 Marx addressed an audience's, audience of English workers referring to the, quote, symptoms of decay far surpassing the horrors recorded of the latter times of the Roman Empire, end quote, in order to remind those English workers that, quote, they will then certainly not be the last in aiding the social revolution produced by the industry, a revolution which means the emancipation of their own class all over the world, which is as universal as capital rule and wage slavery, end quote, Marx. 8. Nearly 125 years after this appeal, in fact a veritable declaration of faith, the, quote, symptoms of decay, end quote, have changed into the certainty of a world in decline without their appearing on the horizon, the grave diggers of capital and the state. Can this phenomenon of decline, which seems to contradict the theses formulated by Marx in the conclusion of capital, the historical tendency of capitalist accumulation, be explained with the help of his materialist conception of history. In other words, using the scientific method which Marx claimed to have adopted in the course of a radical critique of Hegel's philosophy of right. If this is the case, we can consider that, quote, economic law of motion of modern society, end quote, which Marx claimed to have reve revealed the preface, which Marx had claimed to have revealed, in the preface to Capital, to be precisely one of the, quote, truths, end quote, resulting from the application of the materialist method. If the answer to both these questions is yes, are we not then obliged to admit that Marx's thought is opposed to any kind of ethics, and that the famous, quote, categorical imperative, end quote, was only a sally, a sally, a parody of Kantian morality? Does the, econ quote, economic law, end quote, not demonstrate the frightening thesis according to which, quote, even when a society has got upon the right track for the discovery of the natural laws of its movement, it can neither clear by bold leaps nor remove by legal enactments the obstacles offered by the successive phases of its normal development, end quote. Preface to Capital. Nine. Here is a thesis which seems to justify certain critics of Marx who take him to task for his, quote, historicism, end quote, for his mania for identifying social science or the so-called human sciences and natural science, for his ambition to observe and study human societies with the mind of a natural scientist, physicist, astronomer, for his quasi-Spinozian way of exculpating the individual and blaming the, quote, social conditions, end quote, of which the individual remains a product, quote, however much he may subjectively raise himself above them, end quote, preface to capital. It follows that neither the capitalist nor the worker is individually responsible for their destiny since they are only, quote, the personifications of economic categories, embodiments of particular class relations and class interests, end quote. So in the end, what remains of the, quote, categorical imperative, end quote, to overthrow the social conditions which make the workers slaves and reduce the workers to beasts of burden? 10. Marx envisages this overthrow as a long historical stage in a process of evolution which undoubtedly changes the conditions but which also changes men. Hence the, quote, reformism, end quote, in Marx's political theory a consequence of his determinism which rules out the possibility of a society, quote, skipping, end quote, over the phases of its development, or, quote, removing, end quote, their obstacles by legal enactments. 
This, quote, reformism, end quote, is clearly expressed in the Communist Manifesto and in the canon of the International Workingmen's Association. Echoes of it can be found in Capital and in other texts where Marx envisages trade union struggles, demands concerning the shortening of the working day and factory legislation to protect the workers' health and to promote the coercive education of, quote, factory children, end quote, while imposing on the capitalist mode of production, quote, by a coercive law in virtue of the state, Dirk Zvan Zvang Gazetz von Stadt wegen Capital Chapter 15 Quote The simplest appliances for maintaining cleanliness and health End quote as a revolutionary thinker, Marx had to struggle throughout his whole career for, quote, bourgeois, end quote, reform, since liberal democracy means the triumph of the freedom of conscience, association, and organization, which alone can allow the proletariat to educate itself and to prepare itself for revolution and so for the abolition of capitalism. It is only then that they will be in a position to act in the spirit of the, quote, categorical imperative, end quote. In other words, of the ethic which following other reformers placed at the center of his work. Until the, quote, historic, end quote, moment of the revolution, the slaves are only able to, quote, short and lessen the birth pangs, end quote. The end.